What's up guys, Well and Customs here, and today we're taking a look at my newest custom right here. It is my custom Batman figure that, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always searching for the be-all, end-all versions of specific characters. Like, I want the best version of Batman I can have in my collection, the best version of Superman, Captain America, Iron Man, etc. like that. And hopefully this is the right direction to go to. Sometimes you're not going to be able to buy it, you're going to have to make your own. And uh, I found myself doing that a lot. So, Batman, I needed to make a new one. Uh, this one is very heavily inspired by a lot, of, a lot of different versions of Batman, either it be from the animated movie, either the new movies coming out with Batman v Superman, or even the comics. Uh, I just took a lot of small aspects from uh, different versions and try to throw it together. So, as you can see here, we'll go over how I made this. This one is made using a DC Universe Classics Batman doll black one with the yellow symbol up there. The more classic looking one. I thought it was a great base. I love the base like this for Batman. It's nice and big, very muscular and strong. The head is actually from the animated movie Doom. Those that those line of figures. I like this one a lot. It's a little bit slimmer, a little bit anime hint to it. Um, I do like I like it though because I like how the the mask goes underneath his chin over there, which is pretty cool as well. The spikes on top are actually a lot longer, but I shaved them down. I like I like it when he has shorter horns or spikes, whatever you want to call it, ears on the top. I think it looks a lot better. Um, what else is there? The belt is from a really old figure of Batman from the total, what is it called? I think it's the DC Heroes lines a long time ago, a Batman line. I don't know. One of them, but it's one of my favorite belts. I love the the pouches on it. It looks really nice. Really old school looking Batman. The cowl is from the same figure, stock. I did my little trick to it as well. And basically that's about it. And then you repaint. And I think it came out pretty good. I like the look of the new Batman where it's all just a big gray suit. No underwear. I like that a lot. Um, the symbol, the bat symbol on the front is very heavily inspired by the Dark Knight. Because I like how it's big, like a big block. You know, it's not like really skinny and has like the sharp edges at the side and everything like that. I like how it's a big, just a big bat on it, you know. It, you don't even have to pay attention to it because you know it's Batman already, so um, that's why I went with that look. Very inspired by it. Not exactly how it's supposed to be, but very inspired by it somewhat. Uh, other than that, um, he is able to take his head off. And I don't have another suitable Bruce Wayne head to use, but I have this one at least. Try to get it on. There you go. So you have that now. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I know that like, this literally is from the other figure of Batman that came out from the movie, but I think it's not that bad. Also, you can actually pull it off if you want to use it as a normal looking Batman movie figure. It looks pretty nice right there. Uh, but this is the only alternative Bruce Wayne head I have. The other one, I really dremeled out the socket for my Mezco Batman. So I can't use it for this one, uh, but this works pretty well. Yeah. And of course, since I put on the Ben Affleck head, I might as well put on the Batman head, so you can see how that looks like. And it's not horrible, as you can see right there. There actually is a couple versions of the head. This one is the more textured version of the head. If you actually have this one, it doesn't have any texture on it, so this might be more suitable for this one. But you can basically see how it looks like. You know, he doesn't have the really thick neck as you know the rest of them do, but not bad. Not bad at all. Really something I could think about later. But of course this one is made specifically for this head, which I like a lot better. Alright, so let's talk about how I made this figure and some key things I want to bring up. For one thing, I wanted this figure to have two different heads, two different interchangeable heads. Normally, if it's just one head I'm putting on, I don't worry that much about it. Like, for instance, this figure's peg was really big. And if I was just going to have one head on it, I would pretty much just dremel out the hole a little bit bigger and then stick it on, no problems there. But the fact that I wanted two different heads on it, I decided to modify this one. So what I did was I dremeled this down to the specific right size of both of these heads, pretty much the same size. And then from there you you sand it down to make it nice and smooth so that way when you stick the heads on, they go on nice and smoothly or at least easier. Um, 
you know, when you do this, it's not the easiest process because you have to get it the right size. You don't want to over dremel it. If you over, over dremel it and make it too small, the heads will just pretty much dangle in there and it won't look good. So always take your time doing it. You know, I myself wasn't the best at it in the beginning. Of course, the more I do it, the easier it got and better I got at it like anything else. So, you know, like I, the only thing I can say is take your time if you're going to try doing it. Maybe try it on certain figures you don't care about just to get your, the feel of it, your own technique. You know, you, you'll you get better at it. So the next thing is the bat symbol. The bat symbol I love a lot. You can kind of tell it has a nice texture to it right there. See that? So what I used for this specifically was gaffer's tape. But gaffer's tape, if you don't know what it is, is a great tape used by photographers it's very strong very strong tape also the sticky residue on it is great because it's so durable and long lasting and also it leaves no residue as well a lot of photographers use this tape because the fact that you can stick it on something and put it down and if you want to move it you just peel it off and stick it back on something else because it's the, st the stickiness on this tape is just ridiculous and the fact it leaves no residue and it comes right off. It's probably one of the best tapes all around. I like this better than duct tape. Um, I use this for a lot of things to be honest. So that's something if you don't know about. So basically what I did for this one was I cut out a piece of tape. I put it on a cutting board. I traced out different designs of the bat symbol I wanted. And then I just used the exacto knife, cut it out, put it on. No glue, nothing. I just stuck it right on pressed it down on the sides and everything like that and it stays on very nicely it won't come off that is the power of gaffer's tape so look that up if you haven't if you don't know what this is uh, the next thing is the paint job so the paint work if I didn't say before um, I like how it turned out so like I said I just wanted the figure to have all of the muscles coming out and I like the fact that he's not perfect looking you know he I could if I wanted to I can make it all gray and it's not no problems there but I wanted to have a little bit of black coming out especially in the muscles a little bit of grittiness on the sides especially in the legs you, you see all his muscles right there all the sculpt you need to, to get that showing somehow you know if you just flat on paint the whole thing you're not gonna see it um, you need that texture look you need that weathering look you need all that sculpt to shine so I basically just dry brushed the whole figure you know it takes a little bit longer but I think it's more precise and you get a better look in my opinion so that way you can see the lines in his bicep and triceps and his leg muscles and his abs so it comes out a lot better and like I said before I like the grittiness look to it you know it's not perfectly gray you see a little black shading here and there a little bat black in the shoulders you know it just looks overall a lot better in my opinion the last thing also is the gloves and the boots you know I left them glossy on purpose they were glossy in the beginning I didn't want to paint over it because I don't want everything to be matte looking I think of Batman having glossy boots and glossy gloves actually gives a nice shine to him gives like a nice look it's a nice classic looking look to him uh, from for now right now I like how it looks if I want to change it I just make it black flat, uh, flat black no problems there but I like how it looks overall so I kept it that way on purpose all right, quick size comparison. Here is my Batman figure of some of my other Batman figures. As you can see, this was actually my first be-all, end-all one. I actually used the Young Justice body for this one. I like it a lot, but there's something about it I didn't like me. It was too skinny. I took the belt off this one and put on him right there. And this is the Dark Knight one. I changed the head. And of course, this one is the new movie one. And for a fun size comparison, here is Batman with a Batmobile. I like this Batmobile. I like the one from the new movie that came out. I have about two other ones. I'm going to do a new custom on it, specifically for this Batman. Maybe get rid of the gun. Actually, with the gu about the gun, it looks pretty good too. So I might do that. Maybe give it a different color as well. But I thought this would be a nice comparison for you guys. And for another size comparison, here he is with the rest of the Holy Trinity right here. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of the whole animated look. Or, you know, the new movies coming out. I think they look pretty good. And I like how this looks right here. And last but not least, here he is with some of my other DC figures. So, I liked how this one came out. I think it's a great mesh between different versions of Batman. I didn't go over articulation because it's a standard DC Universe Classics figure. So, you pretty much know how it is. If anything else, it has a great ab joint. Unlike the new one. So, 
is a great figure to use as a base. I'm really happy how my Batman turned out. And that's about it guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. And like always, comment, criticize, subscribe. Do whatever you want to pay attention. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at awildandcustoms.com. If you liked the video, get a thumbs up. Peace.